everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting. Probably noticed that action cams like the GoPro and Garmin's Verb are relatively inexpensive now, so it's pretty easy to get cool looking aviation videos like these. But you're going to need a little bit of equipment. Now there are lots of ways to mount a camera both inside and outside of an airplane, and you certainly don't need all of this stuff. But the market has provided some really interesting commercially available mounts, and in this video we're going to take a look at a few of them. So let's break them down by type. For inside the airplane, you're going to want something that will attach to a windshield or window or maybe an exposed tube that will allow you to point the camera anywhere you want it. For outside the airplane, you'll have to attach to a strut, a tie-down ring, or some kind of structure, not a control surface with a mount that's robust enough so that when you land, your $400 camera is still there. First of all, let's not overthink this. Duct tape, painter's tape. Except it's not duct tape, it's gaffer tape. Gaffer tape is made with a fabric base and an adhesive that won't leave a residue, and it's meant for this kind of work. Buy it all day on Amazon for 12 bucks a roll. If you can find US made gaffer tape, it's a little better quality. If you shoot only occasionally from the wing, tape is a safe, practical solution. If you're worried about peeling paint off, then use a layer of painter's tape under the gaffer tape. If your airplane has exposed tubing like the Cub does, there are a couple pieces of hardware that Graham has that will work pretty well. This one is adapted from a yoke mount and it will attach to the tail handle on the Cub, but it will also work inside the cabin and uh, even on a yoke if you want to put a camera there provides a pretty solid mount and with a double socket arm you can position the camera just about anywhere you want. And while we're talking about RAM mounts, this is my go-to mount on the Cub. It's a piece of hardware from RAM called the Strat Base and it'll work on about any size strut or tube. You just need a larger hose clamp. Now to keep it from scratching the paint, I put a couple of strips of inner tube and some painter's tape under it and I just leave it mounted permanently. You will need this double socket arm to connect the mount to the camera, and the shorter this arm is, the better to prevent buffeting. I think RAM's overall most flexible product is this one, which they call the Tough Claw. It's intended for large diameter tubing, but I've also used it on small struts and other structures wherever it can get a good grip. In the cockpit of a Cub, I use one to clamp the portable intercom to the overhead tubing. It's really flexible and it stays put. The RAM system is designed to attach anything to everything, and there are a few accessories in the line that you'll want to have to get the most out of it. This is a RAM ball adapter for the standard GoPro mount, and I'd recommend buying two of them. They seem to get misplaced when you most need them. I already mentioned the double socket arms. I like to have these in at least two lengths, including this one, which is a composite swivel design that provides plenty of flexibility. If you have a current generation cell phone, say an iPhone 6, the camera is easily as good as a GoPro, and RAM makes a mount for that too. It's a nice accessory for a bicycle or a motorcycle if you need that capability. While not specifically a RAM part, it's a good idea to have one of these. It adapts the GoPro mount to a standard quarter 20 tripod stud. I'll get to why that's useful in the cockpit in a minute. The commercial market offers a number of camera mounts. So this one is called the Wing It mount, and it's designed to fit on the strut of a high wing, typically a Cessna. It's a little bit large for the Cub, so I'm trying it out here on a 206. As you can see, it's hogged out of a solid piece of aluminum, and it has three points to accept the standard GoPro shoe. The Wing It really couldn't be much easier to mount. It just straps on with this Velcro strap. However, I should note that this model seems to be intended for a smaller strut because it won't work on the front of the strut and the strap is not fully engaged so if I were going to use this on this airplane I would extend the strap to take it further around. Also the camera installs in the uh, standard GoPro shoe. Unfortunately you have adjustability only in this plane. You can't rotate the camera this way. You can move it down to the other mounts. However there's a solution for this and I'll show you what I used. And one solution I found is this, it's called the SP Swivel Mount, and it allows you to swivel the camera just about in any direction you want it to go. Uh, one word of caution on this is that the SP is plenty robust, you're not going to lose the camera, but I have noticed that it buffets a little bit under certain circumstances. 
So you might get a little bit of camera movement and that's not necessarily desirable, but it does give you the ability to aim the camera where you want it. From time to time, you might want to shoot over the top of a low wing airplane. Frankly, I find the shot a little boring, but hey, you might want the variety. So it's quite a challenge to mount a camera on top of the airplane wing, but there's a simple solution. Drill, drywall screws. Just kidding. Absent any convenient screw holes, the best solution I've come up with is this one. Put down a cross of aluminum foil tape and attach the standard GoPro pressure adhesive pad mount to that. If you have time, let it cure overnight because it'll be just a little bit stronger. Now, looking at that, you'd probably say, well, that's just gonna blow right off of there. Not really. So let's add a little science to what is otherwise unfounded innuendo. Fish scale, bungee. Okay, we'll give it a little tug. There's five pounds. There's eight pounds. There's 10 pounds, which is about five times what you need. So I think it'll stay put. To remove it, just peel the tape and the mount together and then peel the two apart and put new adhesive on the mount if you want to use it again. So what's the matter with using the mount directly? Well, really nothing except that it's a little difficult to get off. You should use a heat gun or maybe a credit card to pry it loose. And also it might take a little bit of paint with it while I've found that the foil tape really doesn't. Before we move on to the cockpit mounts for cameras, let's take a look at two exceptionally well-designed mounts for mounting a camera on the outside of the aircraft. These are among the best design accessories we've ever seen, and believe me, we've seen a lot of them. This one is made by a company called MyPilot Pro, and it's designed to allow you to mount a camera on a tie-down ring, either under a wing or in the tail, quickly and without tools. Let's take a closer look. This is why I think this camera mount is so well designed. First, it has the over-center cam that easily locks it in place, like a bicycle wheel quick mount. They put rubber fender washers on both sides of the clamp. That reduces vibration to the camera and eliminates any damage to the ring. These mounts are available in two designs. One has a straight GoPro mount and the other one has a ram uh, arm, a uh, rotating arm. That gives you a little bit more flexibility in aiming it. One thing I'd change on this or perhaps modify if I had it is I'd drill this hole a little bit off center towards the top or maybe grind off the top. Uh, and that would help to fit it onto the small tie-down rings and LSAs. I've had a little trouble making it fit, but otherwise the mount works really well. Now earlier I said that mounting the camera on top of the wing is a bit of a challenge, but if you have screw holes in the top of the wing, which I do here on the Saratoga, I found a number six screw hole on the uh, wingtip trim, you can mount the in-flight cam and that solves the problem quite uh, nicely. I uh, drove a screw through the billet into the screw hole for the trim, and then once it's in place and the mount is screwed down, you have maximum uh, degrees of freedom. You can point the camera anywhere you want and tighten the screws and it's very secure. It's really a good solution uh, for just about anywhere on the airplane. It can go under the wing on an inspection plate or wherever you can find a screw hole that doesn't interfere with something else. Really nice mount. Very well made at a good price. For my money, the absolute best interior mount is this one. It's called the Joby mount, and this arm is called a gorilla arm, and it's continuously positionable. The suction cup works with this rotating lock, and I have found that it will stick to just about anything, including a surface with a slight curve, like a windshield or a window. It does really well with flat surfaces, and it just never seems to come loose. Now earlier I mentioned that you would need that uh, quarter 20 fitting. This is what you need it for because this has a quarter 20 stud. And that means you can mount other fittings on it as well. Here's my Pilot Pro's inside mount. It's got three suction cups and these will accommodate a curved or flat surface because the suction cup stems have a lot of flexibility. The business end has a short RAM double socket and from there you can use any of the RAM hardware. It's not quite as easy to mount as the single cup designs but it still gets the job done. RAM has its own suction mount. It's similar to the Joby. It uses this uh, locking lever to uh, lock the suction. It doesn't accommodate curved surfaces quite as well as the Joby does, so I tend to use this one for the back seat shooting forward or for a flat glass panel wherever I can find it. 
The double socket arm gives enough flexibility usually to get the camera aimed, but it's not quite as flexible as the Gorilla arm on the Joby mount. In a future video, I'll take a look at audio cable options and methods to get audio from the radio and the intercom into your camera, and also uh, neutral density or prop filters that reduce the rolling shutter effect when you're shooting through a prop. Meanwhile, I gotta organize this stuff again. Sucks to be me. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.